Dwarf Fortress, a game that is only a few years younger than me, but still years ahead in understanding. This has always been a game that's interested me a lot, since I like playing games like Kenshi and Rumworld. This is supposed to be the true father to those types of games. And with the recent Steam remaster and release, I'll be playing Dwarf Fortress for the very first time with you. Now, while I don't know how to play the game yet, this is going to be kind of like a series of videos where I'm going to be learning about it. We'll just start playing a normal save file and go through until it eventually crumbles as a society or maybe we end up conquering the world. For reference, I've only read a bit of a simple quick start guide on the wiki. We're going to be tackling Dwarf Fortress together and talk about everything from all the neat game mechanics to the funny scenarios that arise in my playthrough. So remember to subscribe, leave a like, or some feedback if you enjoy this type of content. Starting with a new game screen, Dwarf Fortress is a very complex but also simple game in its own way as you'll see. Starting with a world generation, we will generate a world with a default settings which takes us to 100 years into the game and with everything pretty much normal. I really appreciate the world generating. It goes by year by year and creates factions and history for you to jump into. The map is randomized and since I'm a newbie I'm going to opt into doing the tutorial which is really basic. I found it to be pretty much perfect to get me started and at the same time it didn't try to teach me everything at once so there's still lots of room to learn and explore. The game picks what it thinks is a good map tile for us to start on and then we begin. We have seven dwarves who are all ready to make an outpost for the glory of all of Golden. On the downside we have barely any supplies left and winter is coming soon but luckily there is a supply caravan on its way. So what we need to do is get a colony started and figure out how to survive and thrive so we can make money and trade with the upcoming caravan. For anyone who's never played Dwarf Fortress here's how it works. We start on the ground level with trees and animals and plants but this is dangerous. To survive in Dwarf Fortress, we're going to need to live like dwarves. So we're going to be digging into the earth and go into the layer below. Here, we're going to mine out some tiles, you know, a little hallway and some room, as this is where a majority of our dwarves are going to end up living and working. They're dwarves after all, so living ground does make sense. Therefore, I began to start selecting some tiles to mine. The game starts with one mining dwarf, and each dwarf has their own specialty. From my understanding, dwarfs all have different skills and personalities, as well as health conditions and needs. So one of the overall goals of a game is going to be to create a livable society or colony for the dwarves to live in and also prosper. If we want to attract more dwarves to our colony, we're going to need to build some more rooms and also get some resources set up. But this will all come day by day. For now, let's start with building some simple rooms and a general stockpile storage location. Once the area was mined out, I had to select a stockpile zone and set it to all. This is very important to confirm this, as if you don't confirm what the stockpile's purpose is, it just won't be used. I kind of figured this out later on in the playthrough. The rooms are all set to hold at least a bed and maybe a piece of furniture or two. Nothing too special, but you know, enough to give our dwarves a place to sleep and live. Before they can rest, we'll need to set up a couple workshops in order to craft some items. In Dwarf Fortress, everything comes from materials such as wood or rock or the different ores that you get but first you need to process these materials into what you want before you can start placing them willy-nilly for example if we want to place a bed well we have to craft a bed. Pretty straightforward, but we're going to get started with just getting a steady supply of beds rolling. Each bedroom, of course, needs a bed in it, but it also needs a door, and then it can be elaborated on from there. At this point, I've completed the tutorial, to which the game has a bunch of tutorials and a help menu for more in-depth gameplay features. So I'll mainly be using that of the Dwarf Fortress wiki when problems do arise. A lot of this is going to be a blind playthrough, kind of learning from my mistakes, which is, you know, kind of a point of it. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time, okay? Either way, with our foundation, started we need to expand on it so I highlighted some more rooms to mine out so that we could start to attract more dwarves to our civilization. We got the area all mined out and a majority of the beds were all made by around day 14. I'd maybe recommend building a couple workshops for crafting furniture because at the rate that I was crafting it, it could have been a lot faster had we had more of a stable workflow. Next, I wanted a bigger room for something else as I knew we needed certain zones and rooms in the game. I just, uh, I didn't really know what yet. I just knew I needed to start to get it set up. The main problem was that the caravan was going to be coming soon and we had no place for it to arrive and trade with us. So I would build a trading depot right next to the stairs where the caravans will enter. It's also right next to our stockpile zone which is ideal as we're going to be needing to move a lot of stuff out of a stockpile zone and to the trader zone when the time arrives. Now that we had a bit of a first layer done I wanted to dig deeper 
one layer down. My plan was just to build an additional storage space right under our first one and just stack them by layers. This will hopefully lead to efficient base planning as everybody needs to go to storage and bring materials to workshops so we're going to want to have our base structured around our storage locations. Now that it was over a month into the game I realized nobody had claimed any of the bedrooms yet. One because they still needed doors of course and two because I needed to create zones for each bedroom. Once you zone a room and make it a bedroom each dwarf will claim them individually. We got most of the beds set up in every room so right now we just need the doors but once those are done we should have around 20 bedrooms. Now that, we, now that we had mined into the second layer of the earth I figured it was time to go even deeper the next layer. We really got to prepare for once our storage gets full. I mean we're going to be crafting crafts as well as putting gems into them. That way we can trade them with the caravan for profit. On top of that there's all the resources and different things we're going to be crafting so we're going to need a lot of room to store everything. Next I needed more rooms set up for workshops that way we could expand our workforce and capabilities. I knew we needed people for food so I set up a butcher, a fishery, and a kitchen. The fishery is optional but we might as well prepare our own fish and food seeing as one of our seven dwarves is highly skilled in fishing as well as three more workshops behind them because you can see there's a lot of workshops to build. While that was being set up I can now zone all the bedrooms we made for our dwarf colony which now opened up a lot of potential migrants into maybe moving into it. Now like I stated before each dwarf is pretty unique, they're all going to have their different personalities, even memories and moods depending on the actions that we take in the game. So I wanted to check out some of our dwarves and see how they're, you know, feeling so far and their feedback was not very good. It seems like people were annoyed by a lot of things, the uh, main concerns were drinking without cups as well as lack of chairs and no dining room. Which is fair, you know, everybody needs to sit down and shit, there's literally not a single chair in the place. But that's alright, now we know what we need to work on. I knew we had to build a dining room for these dwarves or else they'll likely start ripping each other apart verbally and possibly physically. So we're going to use that room in the top right that we mined out earlier and fill it up with some tables and some chairs. I decided the next step would be building more rooms as we went from 7 to 11 dwarves so we're going to have more of our rooms full. I think this little design I got going right now is pretty good. I mean we're going to be able to store hundreds maybe even thousands of dwarves in this fortress but in order to turn that one room into a dining room Room, we of course need to make a zone for it and assign it to be a dining room. Once we do that our dwarves will finally have a place to eat and drink and rest. Our mining is going really well with there being lots of materials to find in different ores in the deeper layers which we'll be able to smelt down into useful equipment. Once we had all the bedrooms mined out all I needed to do was put some doors on them and then put some beds in. Once that was done and we zoned the bedrooms more and more dwarves are going to start flocking to our colony. I think it's looking pretty good for a first time playthrough okay we got a lot lot of basic things set up. The main thing I noticed was we needed more workshops so I put in a mechanic shop as well as a stone working station and a metal smith. This gets us closer to having at least all of the essential workstations set up and functioning. Next I wanted to set up a dormitory for traders or visitors that stay in the colony so I highlighted a box right next to our entrance which I'll try to attempt to fill up with beds and tables. We also need a spot to start a farm as we had plenty of seeds for mushrooms and whatnot which would definitely help our status for drinks. Without drinks, meaning alcohol or beer, the dwarves will get unproductive and a lot more angry and frustrated day to day. So we need to take care of that by growing some plants and then turning them into drinks at the brewing station. To our luck though, the trade caravan had finally arrived which meant we could start to transfer all the items we wanted and then begin to negotiate with the caravan. The caravan gives us an option to request extra resources for the year after so I just selected beer to see how it goes. This raises the price of it a lot, like by 200% but it ensures the trade caravan will bring some for next year. The caravan also gives us a head up for next year as they're always needing different items so if we're able to make or craft items for them they're going to buy it at a much higher price. In order to start negotiating I needed to go to the nobles and admins tab so I could assign a dwarf to the broker job. Each dwarf has different things they're good at and not good at so picking the best dwarf for the job is very important. Having a good broker could be the difference in making more money or losing more money and I kind of realized there isn't really 
really a currency in Dwarf Fortress. Instead, everything has sort of an appraised value, and you kind of just barter goods back and forth with each other. We've been making a bunch of crafts, so we've got about a thousand value worth of goods we can trade for. I selected all the beers and drinks and not much else before accepting the trade and losing out on hundreds worth of goods. Okay, as I said, this was a learning experience. Before I was playing, okay, I was under the understanding that there's probably a currency in the game. It was only after this trade that I realized that I had basically just gave a trader a really good deal and we're a nice guy, because yeah, there's no tr there's no fucking currency in Dwarf Fortress. Now, although we didn't get a lot of loot from this caravan, I'm still confident in the Dwarf Colony, as they set up the next column of bedrooms. As well as getting the dorm set up, slowly we had lots of food, water, and drinks. So, I think we're going to be able to last for the next few months. I figured, really, we got very little to worry about. The dining room was looking really nice. I even added in a second row of tables and chairs. I did learn the dwarves don't like eating at the same time table as other dwarves but you know that's okay it's better than nothing the farm plot was mined out now so we could finally begin getting the ground ready to plant different types of plants that way we would be able to turn them into alcohol through brewing as i was setting up the new bedrooms another six migrants arrived at the colony bringing us from 11 to 17 over twice as many as when we had started. As I said, the overall goal is going to be for us to grow this fortress along with keeping our dwarves happy and productive until they either conquer the world or die out like Rome did. It really doesn't matter, we're having fun and learning along the way. We received a task to build a temple dedicated to the Flaxen denomination, so I accepted the task as I knew we needed to set up a temple anyways. I mined out two areas for offices, but I'm not really sure how these work yet. I'll watch a video on that later. I didn't figure it out when I was playing, so don't ask me on that yet. We're gonna have to work on that part. <laughs> Other parts of the game were going really well. I made three more workshops and connected the hallway all the way to the storage. Going down a few levels, I had some dwarves mining out a lot of rocks and gems that were in the wall. There's lots of potential money to be made here, and really it only gets better the deeper we go. I decided to do some strip mining though, classic Minecraft style. I'm not sure if it'll be dangerous foes or challenges that's gonna come from going to the very bottom, so for now just mining a few levels below where we are is what I really plan to do. We'll still have a first few top floors in order to build rooms and different workstations for our colony. Our fortress is thriving, so of course I started to mine out another block of a dozen or so rooms. I also figured out that dwarves like having furniture in the room such as chests or cabinets so that's when I decided to make a bunch of chests have a workstation for every single room in the fortress. It seems a bed, chest, and cabinet as well as a door will lead to the dwarves living a happy day-to-day -day life so it's worth investing in. Meanwhile I cut down a really big tree which put a hole in our roof. I'm not really sure if we can make roofs in dwarf fortress so I just made a hatch door to cover the hole and stop possible rain or people falling into our base. The next area I wanted to mine out would be for that temple that we were requested to build earlier. It'll help our colony having a place to worship and believe in something as that affects their mood and personality. I got the room made but I still couldn't make a temple until I made some altars for it. We'll do this at a working station but at least for now it'll be a good general meeting place which we really needed as well. The dwarves love socializing with each other and we'll have different conversations, spread rumors, or tell story so we need places for them to do this. Next I really wanted to set up an archery range. I didn't have any crossbows or arrows yet but I figured this would be a really good idea as eventually we're gonna use it. I had to make an area outside as well for the animals because we had yaks and goats all hanging out in the fortress making it messy and probably smell like shit. So I just set up a simple pasture outside and clicked those animals to go live out there. And in a moment we're about to hit one year in Dwarf Fortress. Well, we're a few weeks off from the day we started, but we're on year 101. Seeing as we've survived for a whole year, Morals were high and I figured out soon we'd need to make the altars in one of the workstations. So I began to start to make them out of rocks. Along with this, I set up five archery targets and made the room a shooting range for all of our archers that don't exist yet. <laughs> I swear, I'm going to set them up in the future, just for now it's going to be a useless room. Around the useless room, I carved out a new hallway and I started to mine out the last room in that little block, which I planned to turn into our first tavern or bar. The altars were finished being made, so I put some offering places in the room from earlier in order to turn it into a temple. All of the bedrooms that we had made earlier were furnished and zoned, so our main priority now was setting up the tavern. You know, a little fun fact is in times like the Wild West, place like 
saloons or taverns, they were always like a priority for starting a town because it brings people of all kinds of life to there. We'll have everyone from travelers to workers and it's just the best place to keep up with day-to-day -day news or rumors. Putting a chest of a tavern will make your dwarves fill it up with any cups or mugs they have crafted. That way they'll have easy access to drinks. We had four more migrants join the fortress a few days later, which brings us up to 21 dwarves. That's three times as many dwarves than we started with, so we're doing really good. Although we are running low on water, or it seemed like it was inconvenient for our dwarves to just be drinking water from the pond. So I knew I needed to fix this somehow. I figured maybe building a well would fix this, but we needed to build some stone blocks as well as some stone mechanisms first in order to build that well. While we were doing that, the miners were digging deeper and deeper with the rest of the colony hard at work or socializing in one of the many nice rooms we've set up. I now had three more places for workshops as well so I filled them up. One with a smelter, the second one being a wood furnace, and the third one being a leather working station. The smelter and wood furnace kind of go hand in hand and they're super important as we're going to need to burn wood in order to make charcoal for fuel. Then we can put that fuel into the smelter and it can smelt ore and rocks that we've been mining. Slowly I was beginning to fill up all of the rooms of cabinets increasing the living quality of our Dwarves. On the 17th of Hematite, a human caravan arrived at our base with wares to trade. I had over a thousand in value from rinky dinky arts and crafts to different items, so I'd be trading all of the figurines and bracelets we made for some equipment. I also got some seeds and then of course some drinks and food. I still had a lot of stuff to sell after that first trade, so then I bought a nice musical instrument which we'd be able to use for entertainment at the tavern. As well as some materials, cheeses, and books, this was a much better trade trade than the last caravan. I mean, other than not having very many drinks, we were able to buy some plants that way we could turn them into drinks. Overall, the fortress is thriving. Moving on to 25 dwarves, we were getting new migrants every month, growing at a pretty fast pace. Another human caravan would stop by, making us even more money and allowing us to restock on essentials like alcohol, food, and fish. Our miners were mining about four levels down, that way we could try to find any valuable gems or materials that we could put put into our crafts for even more profit. The next goal I had was to build even more rooms again, so I would set up three more rooms or about 18 bedrooms. While the beds and the doors and everything else for them was being made, I also highlighted three more spots for workshops to add to our base. 18 new bedrooms would be big for the colony, allowing us to almost double our current population. Most of the rooms got set up really fast, with only six needing to wait until we got doors and whatnot crafted. But another caravan had finally arrived, and a dwarf Dwarf caravan at that, likely with alcohol that we had requested last year. I was able to trade him around 3,000 value worth of crafts, and in return he was able to give me some weapons as well as some drinks and food. We got a lot of good stuff off of that trader, and by the 6th of sandstone, all of our bedrooms had been completed. Just wow. The base is just looking so good. I did feel like the base was missing some things though, so I looked on a wiki and saw that with taverns, you should have multiple taverns along with rooms attached to them. If you do this, that will bring more visitors to the tavern and travelers can end up staying in those rooms. By the first of a month, we had more dwarves coming to our colony, a total of 9 new dwarves this time, bringing us to 34, which is insane. So it means we're at least surviving, you know, maybe not thriving at the top of our abilities yet but we hadn't had any deaths so it was looking promising. Once the new tavern area was mined out, I set up some of the rooms and then put some tables and chairs in it. In order to set up the tavern, I had to assign the tavern area to its own meeting area zone and then with the bedrooms, I'd assign them to belong to the new tavern. The tavern's named the Bellies of Crafting and this is going to become a hub of the game hopefully. This will attract more people to our colony, both good and possibly bad. But either way, we were making progress towards something. Other than on the 26th of Timber when somebody finally died. <laughs> okay, a dwarf died to dehydration, which is absurd. Okay, it's not even hot outside, it's like autumn. So I built a few more wells for our colony for our dwarves to get water from. Since we had a death, I needed to build a cemetery or somewhere to store our dead bodies. So I carved out a spacious room next to the tavern and began to build some coffins. Here we'll be able to place all of the dead dwarves in coffins. All I had to do was assign a zone to that room and then put some coffins in it. And simple, done. As you can see, we're nearly on year two and we're currently not doing too bad. I mean, this is a great foundation to begin with at least. While the game 
game is very complex and there's still a lot to do. I'd like to say that the gameplay is pretty simple and way less intimidating when you start playing it or looking at it. All your characters are always working or doing what they do anyway, so that's really nice. You know, it just feels like I'm managing a colony that actually lives and breathes on its own. So, so far, I'm really enjoying the game. If you enjoyed the first video on the game, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I wouldn't be playing this game if it wasn't for Insane Crystal, a longtime subscriber who actually ended up gifting me the game. I really appreciate him and everybody that's given me support, and I'm really loving the game so far, so I hope you guys are too. Hopefully, we can continue this adventure again next week. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.